Jesus. <laughs> and Faith was like, huh? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. I, quit. I quit. That is the topic for our midweek series for the month of June. It's June 1st, y'all. It's June 1st. It's the first of the month. And it's June 1st. And I quit. I quit. Already. That's our topic for tonight. I quit. I quit. And the reason why the topic is I quit, if you notice what I said earlier, I feel that as adults, we tend to live life as a lie. We tend to live life as a lie. We tend to live our lives as a lie. So, as we enter into this topic, as we enter into this series, I quit. The first thing we need to quit, men and women of God, is living a lie. That's the first thing we need to quit. So let's go ahead and look at your neighbor again and say, neighbor, I need to quit living a lie i need to quit living a lie so pastor des what do you mean by quitting living a lie because i don't think i'm living a lie well let me let me open this thing up so we i can explain to y'all what direction i'm going in this month you ready first of all i'm going to open up to everybody here right and i forgot to get the mics i'm gonna get the mics in a minute if somebody wants to open up and say something but I want to ask a question in our life, right? You ready? So far, I've lived on this earth for 42, no, 41 years, right? Wow. Wow. We being disrespectful already. We ain't even 10 minutes in. But yes, I've lived on this earth for 41 years. How many of us can honestly say that at one point in our life, we've lived a lie. Absolutely, right? We lived a lie. So that's good. So I don't have to, nobody has to answer and say, you know, because there's more than, more than one person in this room that's lived a lie, right? Question, how or why did you live that lie? How or why did you live that lie? For image, keep that faith. Keep that. I mean, don't keep that lie for image, but keep that. <laughs> keep that. So for image, good. Anybody else? Saving the embarrassment. Wow. Keep that, Deacon Jeremy. I mean, don't keep the embarrassment, but you know what I'm saying? So we got to for image to save ourselves from getting embarrassed. Okay, anything else? Anything else? Um, in a way, pleasing somebody, okay. You live in a lie because you want to please somebody, okay. Reputation slash image kind of go hand in hand because your image is what you represent. Your reputation is what you put forth uh, for others to, uh, to see you as. So, yeah, kind of hand in hand, okay. So, we're kind of on the same wavelength. So, I get that. So, what do we mean by what am I talking about living lies? And what if I told you, you ready for this one? What if I told you that even as men and women of God, we're living a lie? What if I told you that as men and women of God today, you're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, you're walking that straight and narrow, you're praying to God, you're reading your word, you're doing the things that you feel you need to do in regards to being biblically sound, but you are still living a lie. What do you mean by that, Pastor Dez? Hold up. I can't be living a lie. I'm going to show you how you're living a lie. You ready? I got a few lies that I know a lot of us are living to this day. You ready for the first one? Yes. Number one, I have to meet everybody's needs. Lie number one, I have to meet everyone's needs. You see, Many people struggle with trying to meet everybody's needs. I, I, I want to call it, it's that Superman or, or that Superwoman complex that a lot of us have. You know, I got to be there for everybody. How many of us have been there? 
How many of us been there and said, well, I got to be there for that person. I got to be there for them. I have to be the one to come. I got to do it. Like you bend over backwards and you ensure that you are taking care of them, right? For example, I have to help my relatives. I have to help my first, second, third, and fourth cousins. I just got to. I got to. They my cousins. I got to take care of them. Or how about, I know my son is a grown man. I know he's in his 40s. But... I got to keep paying his rent. How many of us have been there? <laughs> How many of us have been there? Literally, it's in my notes. I didn't write that. I, I'm literally looking at this research and I'm pulling it from places. How many of us have either been there or we know somebody that they are still taking care of their grown children? I know somebody still taking care of their grown children as if they are still teenagers or still living with them at home, right? Ready for this one? My baby needs me. How many heard that? <laughs> Which baby? And this, and this, we talking about adults, or we talking about relationships? My baby need me. Or how many have been here? I have to help everybody at work. They need me. It's okay, some of us already cut that one off a long time ago, right? So yeah. Yeah, they got cut off about six months ago. Or how about this one? You may have cut that one off, but you may say to yourself, those people at work won't make it without me. They gonna be fine without you? <laughs> they gonna be fine? They may not be fine without you, but okay. But what if I told you there are people that, that think that way on their job? They like, listen, I can't take vacation because if I take vacation, things is gonna fall apart. I can't leave. I have to be there. I have to. Or how about this? I have to help everybody in my neighborhood. I'm trying to be, I'm, try, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be neutral in this aspect, okay? So follow me, y'all. I'm trying to be neutral. <laughs> How about this? My friends need me. My friends, they need me. Like, they my day ones. I, we, we grew up together in the same neighborhood. Went to the school together in the same neighborhood. 20 plus friendship. Like, they need me. I'm going to be there for them, right? And they can't survive without me. My children cannot survive without me, even though they're in their 40s. Even though they're in their 30s, my children cannot survive without me. I, they need their mama. They need their daddy. They need me, right? They need me. I, I, when we think about this, a lot of us may sit there and say we don't do that or that's not us. But I can almost guarantee at one point in your life, you literally have said at least one or two of these statements and what I just said. You literally have said one or two of these statements because you lived the lie. You lived the lie thinking that everyone, you need to make sure that you meet everybody's need. And I knew that because at one point, that's what I thought. I thought I had to meet everybody's need, especially now being a pastor. Huh. I felt as though I had to meet everybody's need. If I didn't pick that phone up, if I didn't answer that text message in time, if I didn't answer that email in time, I felt as though that that individual, that partner, that, that man or woman of God would look at me completely different. And you know what it did to me? You know what it did to me? It ripped me apart. It ripped me apart. Because I thought that in order to be successful as a pastor, I have got to meet the needs of the congregation. I have to. No matter the cost, I have to because it's the calling, right? But what ended up happening in that moment was I began to lose myself in the people. Mothers, how many of us have lost ourselves and our children? 
How many of us have done so much and we poured so much into our children that we literally have lost who we are? We have to literally recreate ourselves once our child has grown up and they don't need us anymore. Hmm. You see, I learned that living that lie is unhealthy, that everybody needs you or that you must meet everybody's need. That's a lie that we've been living, not only as men and women of God, but as a society, period. We've been living that lie. And if you don't believe me, you ready for this? Let's go Bible. I'm going to show you in the Bible a particular man, right, who lived the lie of I have to meet everybody's needs. Turn with me to the book of Exodus. We're going to stay in the Old Testament right now. The book of Exodus. And I'm going to read chapter 18. I'm going to be in chapter 18. I'm going to read verses 13 through 18 in the New International Version. And it reads, The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as a judge for the people. And they stood around him from morning till evening. Verse 14. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, what is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, because the people come to me to seek God's will. Verse 16 says, whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. Verse 17, Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves, what? Out. For the work is what? It's too much. It's too heavy for you. You cannot handle it. What? Alone. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, did you read it? Did you read that? Verse 18, it says, you and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. So in this moment, Jethro really pretty much was telling Moses, right, that he was trying to meet everybody's needs. And that isn't good. Having the Superman or Superwoman complex is not good. Now, I know we call our friends that there's many times I've called my wife a Superwoman. She really, really is. But there's times where I have to even tell my wife, she got to sit down. You got to literally take time out for yourself. There's times where I've even told my wife that, hey, it's okay to be selfish right now. It's okay to do things for yourself right now. Because it's so easy to do things for others, we forget ourselves in the process. And you can't meet, you can meet some of the needs, but you can't meet every need. Please hear me clearly. You can meet some of the needs, but you cannot meet every need. And this was the kind of thing Jethro was telling Moses. He was saying, listen, you're doing too much. You can't do it alone. Stop trying to be the only individual that handles everybody's needs. You ought to help people, but you can't help all people. Okay? So we kind of understand that, right? We've even, we've even said that to ourselves a couple of times. But how many of us still feel bad when we don't help people? Sometimes. Sometimes we still feel a certain type of way where, man, I, I, I couldn't answer the phone even though the phone was ringing. Or I was just too tired to have a conversation. But then you feel bad because you didn't have the conversation. Or you saw the text message and you left the text message on red. And it wasn't because you purposely wanted to but it's really because you just could not you did not how many of us sometimes just don't have the energy to respond man they may want to talk about something else and sometimes how many of us just don't have the we don't have the patience 
to stay on the phone with people doing a whole lot of this. <laughs> Some of, okay, they say look at it and let it ring. Turn that down, Jeremy. They need to hear this one. So, ah. <laughs> so wait a minute. Faith said, Faith said she literally look at the phone and watch it ring. So that way, <laughs> she can't. <laughs> the person calling can't make it think that she wasn't there to pick up the phone. So they got a snooze button on the side of the cell phone. Okay, I'm gonna need y'all to talk to me after service. I'm gonna need y'all to talk to me after service, cause I'm gonna need y'all to talk to me after service, cause I'm hearing some new stuff. <laughs> Make sure what? Man. <laughs> but it's like, and it's not that you just don't want to answer, but. In a way, you just don't want to answer. <laughs> Wait, some of us have been there where we about to send a text and we thought we sent the text and it never got sent. Oh, y'all tired. Y'all tired. Y'all really tired. So y'all literally will type a text ready to send to somebody. Thank you, sent sin. Waiting for another text back, and the text never came. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, shoot. Wait, so y'all literally put the text message in the phone, and nobody clicks in, and you thought you clicked in, and you still waiting for the response to the message that you did not send. Oh, y'all tired. Y'all sleepy. Y'all doing too much. Y'all trying to meet everybody's needs. Stop trying to meet everybody's needs. That's the first lie. We can't do that. And I'm going to tell you the reason why it's not good. You ready? The reason why it's not good is because you're wearing yourself out. You are going to wear yourself out completely. And you ready for this? It's not good because you're living a stressed out life trying to meet everybody else's needs. So you're stressing yourself out trying to be there for everybody else. That's why you got all that gray hair. Now, it ain't right you got that gray hair. That's wisdom. That's why you got that gray hair. That's why I got a little gray in my beard. It's wisdom. Is it? Yeah, good. That's good. You ain't supposed to see it yet. It's coming. You ready for the next one? Why another reason why it's not good is because you get guess what happens? You're frustrating people because you're over promising and under delivering. So you begin to frustrate others when you don't deliver. You promise you're gonna do something. How many of us <laughs> how many of us have, have sat there and been invited to things? You ready for it? I gotta get the mic because y'all gonna have to hear this. I got I want y'all to listen. I want somebody. How many of us, right? <laughs> How many of us have been invited to things and you say you're going to come? You say you're coming. Like you say, I, I got you. I'm coming. I'm coming, right? I'm going to make it. I'm going to be there. And then you don't go. And you don't show up. And you don't show up. And when you don't show up, <laughs> what's the reason behind you not showing up? <laughs> I laid down on that bed. And that was it for me, right? My phone died. But you sit there and say, so they sit there and say, Faith, I want to invite you to my, my son's birthday party. Right? My son is turning, let's say the son is turning five. It's a little kid's birthday party. I want you to come, right? 
and you say, yeah, I'm coming. Pastor Des, I'm going to be there. You know, I love your son. I'm going to be there, right? I give you the invitation. I give you all that good stuff. And then the day of the birthday, right, you either send me a text saying you cannot make it or you don't show up at all. So for me, you wouldn't do it to the pastor, but I'm a person. I'm a person. So you wouldn't do it to the pastor, but you would do it to somebody else. See, I love I, excelling. Yeah, I love I it. Say, we yeah, so transparent yeah, up in here. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Depending on who it is. Depending on who it is. You know, if, if right? they are, you know, close to me. Okay. You know, that I consider close, whether it's family or friends. Uh huh. You know. You know, thank God for kids, cause I'm gonna use them, baby. My ba I can't find my baby shoe. Right. So, my question is this now: If you already have those priorities set, why do you even accept the invite? Yeah, the, I wanna... They catch you in a good mood. Uh huh. I had my coffee. Yes, I'm catching a good move. What you got, Twan? I, you about to put, come on, brother. Let me hear it. He has something. Well, you, when they get you, you most of the time have the best intentions. Like, you want to, but then you're not living in reality. When you're living off mm. the hive, you know, mm. you just had a good day, whatever. And when it comes to it, you just, you just don't have it in you. Cause, and sometimes it just be accident. You just... I mean, I watch her sit down for a minute, fall asleep, and then she gone. Like, it ain't on purpose. She just, she just gone. And it's like. He just gone. So Aisha says, usually done with good intention. Man, Pastor Jerick is over here. He's commenting, boy. She says, I've, I've, I have nothing else to do. She does say, okay, I deliver 99% of the time. 1% I really can't. Yeah, that that that's that that's 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 you know y'all pastor. You know that's the one that 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 this 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 series is about. Okay, she has to learn to take a step back, and I truly feel that this is why baby Jeremiah is here is is teaching her to take a whole step back and to sat down somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She is sitting down, enjoying, listening to us, but. How many of us have been there to where we accept the invite, but we know we can't do it? But we sit there and say, okay, I'll come. Yeah. Or we sit there and say, I'll see about it when you know you cannot be there. Yeah. Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, hold up. So Deacon Jeremy said, because I just said that. I said, okay, go ahead. You said that. What you said? Okay. No, so, don't try to don't try to clean it up. No, nah, I'm don't not trying try to clean, clean up nothing. Up. <laughs> I ain't gonna clean up nothing. No, what I'm saying is, if you, I would rather say, I'll try and see. I don't know yet, knowing that I can't make it. I'd rather say that than say, you know what? Yeah, I'll make it, knowing that I really ain't gonna make it. I'd rather say that because there's like, hey, look, it's not a for sure answer. Hey, look, I'm telling you, I'm gonna be there. I'm saying, hey, look, there's a certainty, I'm gonna be there. And it is a possibility that I ain't going to be there because I said I'm going to try and right. see. But did you hear the question? You know you're not going to be there. Why would you even accept the invite? I didn't, I didn't accept no invite, did I? But that's, you, that's accepted the invite. You still gave the person inclination that there's a possibility that you will be there. Well, so if you, know, if you know you're not going to be there, you know what that is? They better not get their hopes up. That's the case. <laughs> Say that, Apostle. Say that, Twan. That's a lie. God That's a forgive, lie. God forgive me. Yep. That's a <laughs> lie. And how many of us have lived that lie? How many of us have spoken that lie? We say, yeah, I'll see about it, bro. I'm, I'm going to check my calendar. Knowing good and John Brown well that you ain't going. For whatever reason, you just not going to be there. Now, let's flip it. Let's flip it back to the body of Christ. You ready? Okay. Now, what about... What about always being there for someone and stretching yourself for someone in ministry? Give me an example. Okay, Deacon Jeremy. He said, give, us a, give me an example. So I'm going to use Deacon Jeremy for an example. You ready? 
Deacon Jeremy, every time Deacon Jeremy has a concern or issue, he always calls Pastor Dez. Always texts his Pastor Dez. Pastor Dez, I'm in a, I'm in a pickle right now, Pastor. I, I need you. Okay, what you got? We're going to sit down. We're going to have a chat. We're going to have a chit chat. We're going to have a talk. We're going to have a counseling session. He calls me again the very next day. Pastor Dez, uh, listen, I heard what you said, but listen, I need some help because yada, 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 yada. Okay, Deacon Jeremy, I got you. This is what you need to do. How about we go into God in prayer and we, we seek God on, on our, we seek God together on your behalf. We get some things together. We write some notes down, bring some, get some goals together. Okay, we good to go. All right, Pastor, good. Thank you, man. Thank you for listening, Pastor. Thank you so much. The very next day, he texts me again. Pastor, I, 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 I need you. I need you. Pastor, you got time to talk? He texts me. You got time to talk? So being a pastor, Tuan, I can't say no. That, that, that's, that's, that, that's, that's, my, that's my deacon. That, that's, that, that's, that, that's the guy. That's a brother in Christ. That's somebody that God has chosen to be planted here for me to help lead, coach, mentor, minister to. So I can't say no. So I got to answer the phone. We got to have a conversation, right? And then it's the same thing we had a conversation about two or three days ago. Pastor Dad, I know you told me to do that. I did it, but listen, I need some more insight. Can we pray again? Can we pray again? Yes, Deacon Jeremy, we're going to pray again, right? Then two weeks later, no, a week later, Deacon Jeremy calls me back. Right after church on Sunday, Pastor Dez, can I talk to you for a second? All right, so listen. <laughs> what happened, right? Listen, I need you to... I need you to go ahead and I need you to go ahead and, and, and pray for me again because I, I don't I don't think I really got what you went ahead and told me two weeks ago. So I'm gonna need you to really like go ahead and can we go ahead and just pray right now? <laughs> so what happens if I continue? to meet the same need for the same person continuously over and over again. What happens to the pastor? Y'all gonna need you to talk into the mic. I gave all y'all a mic. <laughs> they all got mics. Pastor Faith. Ah! They don't want it. You started talking. I feel like the person starts to become aversive. Mm. You start dreading their phone call mm. because it's nothing but issues. Wow. Yeah. Wow. She ain't your know. Wow. <laughs> what you got, Apostle? Because you was talking. <laughs> nothing? Well, she said something about feeling drained. Go ahead, Deacon Jeremy. What you got? <laughs> Well, one thing I, I'm not gonna say what is I, I want to change it a little bit. Not what is what it does to now, you. Now, I will say this: that's that's not happened between me and Deacon Jeremy. Thank okay? you. It, it, I don't it, want it, nobody it. going home talking about man. Deacon Jeremy be annoying. Yeah, you got it together. That that as an example. Go ahead, Deacon Jeremy. Well, one thing you're doing is though you're enabling me, yeah. mm. so I'm not growing at mm. all. So I'm just so every time I have a little hiccup, I'm like, hey, look. Let me use my jail, uh, jail free. Uh, Get out of jail free. Car. There you go. There we go. I can't even say it right. And, right. I'm, and, and then I'm, I'm using you. Right. And then there's no growth. Right. And that's that was the point I wanted to make in ministry. Now, it's not it doesn't always have to be the pastor now because our calling is different. That has that sacrifice has to happen to a degree. It has to, whether we want to answer the phone or whether we don't want to answer the phone, it has to happen. But let's talk about our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. You always getting a phone call from your brother about praying, about having a conversation, about talking about something, right? And, and you're giving them the suggestion because, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I kind of scratched things a little bit. I, I, I have a psychology major and I don't like when we say giving each other advice 
because if you're not licensed to give, even in a certain degree of field of when it comes down to counseling and mentorship and we don't give advice, we facilitate suggestions to help your growth. But when we give advice, what ends up happening is you take the advice for what it's worth and then when it doesn't, when it doesn't pan out the way you suggest it, then we have an issue. And sometimes when we give advice, we give advice from a personal standpoint and a personal experience. And so we don't ever want to do that when we're, when we're dealing with an actual session where we're talking to people, right? But let's just go back. Now, flipping back into this, this situation, you got the individual that's wanting to pray, right? Y'all are talking, you praying, you praying, you do what you got to do. They always come to see you for the same exact thing. What ends up happening is not only, like Deacon Jeremy said, you become that person's enabler, but you're robbing that person from being used by God. You rob that individual from having an actual interaction, authentic, personal interaction with God. Because now guess what happens? Antoine, you become my God. You become my God. Trinity, you become my God. Now, it's one thing to look, look, to look for, uh, how can I say it? Uh, not, not words of advice, but it's one thing to look for um, when we're dealing with, let's say you got a question about a biblical text and you, you want to you wanna grow a discussion or, or, or you want to have a dialogue about something to study the text. But whenever you're reaching out with some, ever reaching out to someone and it's always dealing with you needing them to help pray for you. But we both have the same connection to the same God. So my prayer shouldn't be more stronger than yours. It should just help push your prayer. But what ends up happening is how many of us have had that or we know people to where they literally are only calling certain individuals for prayer. Or they always tap into this one person or these two people for, I guess, if I talk to them, I know my prayer going to get answered. You've done that for yourself, right? Let's be honest. Let's be honest, right? I can't tell you how many times, Trinity, I've tried to reach out to my senior leader, Pastor, Pastor Jarrell K. Solomon, right? I'm going to put him out there. I love you, Pastor. I love you. But I got to put him out there. How many times I've tried to call and it go to voicemail? Or I text and he texts me back, hey, I'm going to call you back or I'm going to text you about, about 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock or not. He says he call me, going to call me back at 3 p.m. I got it. It's 5 p.m. He ain't call me back. So, so I call him again. It goes straight to voicemail, right? Not straight to voicemail, but it rings and it goes to voicemail, right? I leave a message. He texts me back. Hey, I got your phone uh, got your phone call, got your voicemail uh, tied up right now, but I'm going to call you back at 5. Okay, cool, no problem. It's 10 p.m. He ain't called me back. But see, you know what ended up happening in those moments? I had to realize that I had to stop depending on my senior leader for God for, to be my God in situations. What could have been like? What's your? It drives them backwards, okay? Yeah, it, can. I mean, it, can be it can be a double-edged sword. Right. It can be a double-edged sword. And see, but see, the crazy thing about that also, I had to realize, Apostle, is that in order for me to have that revelation, I needed to go to God for myself. So I can't assume that my leader is just like pushing me off. No, I'm saying I, right, I can't assume that that individual that I reach out to and they don't reach back or they're saying they're going to reach back and they don't reach back because I place them in such a high pedestal to the point where I don't have that same relationship that I need with my God. So what, and, hmm? Why lie? Mm hmm Right. Now I'm going to say this. He's gotten back with me. Right, so I'm gonna put that out there. My leader's gotten back with me. I don't want nobody saying I'm put that out there. He's gotten back with me, literally. He's gotten back. But I'm bringing it up as an example as when you're trying to reach out with someone and they don't reach back to you. Being that leader that doesn't reach back, what ends up happening is what do you feel? The leader. The leader feels torn. 
the leader feel, but we don't understand why that leader is doing it. It may be to a point where that leader is stressed. They are stretched and they cannot just respond when they when the person reaching out to them wants them to respond. Right. And so or it can be the other way around. It can be a point where that leader is not responding because there's been something put up called a standard to where God is like, okay, it's time for you to stop depending on him to do the things that I can do for you. But the problem is we put people in those positions of help to where now we've come codependent upon them to where it's like, if I don't reach out to this individual right now, my life is going to fall. Where it should be, if I don't pray to God and wait on an answer from him right now, my life is going to fall. Amen? So, we rob other people from having their, that, that personal connection with God. Now, I am going to say this. There are meat there are me manning. There are... There are situations that come up in our life to where that communication is needed. That communication is vital. And if you cannot reach out to those individuals for vital information, then maybe you need to question, to, should that individual be somebody you are reaching out to in this season? Make sense? But when we're dealing with a situation to where you're reaching out to them because you feel as though your situation won't get handled the way you feel it should be handled spiritually. If they don't answer the phone or if they don't pray for you, then maybe you need to kind of reevaluate where you've put them. Amen. So how do I break free from this lie that we've lived in? How do I break free from this lie of I must please everyone? How do we break free? I mean, some of us already broke free. I, I ain't got to please nobody. I'm good. I ain't worried about that. I ain't got to please nobody. But we're talking in general, y'all. Because I'm telling you, there's a few lies in this story that, that's going to connect with all of us. That we got to quit this season. All right? So what do we do? What are some questions we need to ask ourselves so that we, we can quit living that lie about how you must please everyone? First question is how is this or how will this affect my relationship with God? Me pleasing everybody, how, how is that going to affect my relationship with God? Because guess what? What ends up happening is you start putting those people ahead of God. You start putting the people that you're pleasing ahead of God. You start putting those, I would say, those... Uh, those phone calls, those text messages, those those time frames in which you 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 would normally spend in time in prayer and fasting. Now you're out there trying to do things for other people and now you're stretched and now you don't even have the, the energy and the physical capacity to give God his time because you've been so spent giving others their time. Amen. So ask yourself, is this affecting my relationship with God? Is this affecting my relation? Is this affecting me? personally is this affecting me mentally is this affecting me physically how many of us have not only been tired but body aches and just like to the point where you were you were you were good at one point agile at one point now you're doing these numbers a zombie right or emotionally how many of us have just now become numb and dry you become numb and dry because you 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 but you don't realize that you become numb and dry because you've lost yourself in helping everybody else out. You've lost yourself in reaching and meeting everybody else's need. And then for some of us, because guess what? A lot of us who are married, a lot of us who have children, are meeting everybody else's needs outside of our house. Oh. Uh. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, I done, I done stepped in something. I done stepped in something. You know, you got to, you, you know, you know, you know you done stepped in something when they face look like this. Mm. 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 You know the Holy Ghost thing came in when they get that stink? Mm. 
How many of us? <laughs> we are so busy meeting the needs of other people that we miss meeting the needs of the people who matter the most, our spouse, our children. Now I heard when I said that, somebody said it's easier. Somebody said it's easier to meet the needs of people outside of your relationship than it is to meet the needs of the person in your relationship. It's easy to meet the needs of people that are outside of your children than to meet the needs of your children. Is that, is that a true statement? Have we been there before? Yes, I love that y'all are transparent here. I love it. I love it. I love it. We've been here. That it's easy for me to go out and meet somebody else's need. Now, when we talk about meet somebody else's need, outside of the marriage, outside of the home, I am not talking about that area. I ain't talking about popcorn love. Hear me when I tell you. I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about the popcorn. I ain't talking about <laughs> Stop laughing at me, Twan. I ain't talking about that. Amen. I'm talking about somebody else got a need. Somebody else needs you to do something for them. You would much rather put on your clothes, head outside and meet their need as opposed to sitting at home, meeting the need and filling the love tank of your spouse. Mm. Wow. Twan and he done scratched his ear. Faith said, yes, all up in his ear. He's like, all right now, all right, you said yes the first time. You ain't got to say it loud now. I heard you the first time now. You know what I'm saying? I heard you. But it's, <laughs> but <laughs> Deacon Jeremy says, save him for love's imprint. But it's easy. But what if I told you that, that doing that is living a lie? Because the Bible says forsake all others and cling to your spouse. So that means nobody else's needs should matter greater than your spouse. Nobody else's needs should matter greater than your children because the Bible says your children are inheritance. Now, if your child is in their 40s and you still meeting their need, then you and you and your child need to go to God in prayer. Because I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's certain needs you can meet, and then there's certain needs you got to tell your child, all right, baby, you got to go find out for yourself and I'm going to pray for you, but you got to go. Amen. Or that daughter mother need. Hey, it's just sometimes you got to say, hey, mm, the Holy Ghost boy that <laughs> stepped in it. But listen, <laughs> you can't relate. But how is it affecting the fact that you got to ask yourself that question? So if it's affecting the people inside my house, then maybe I should reevaluate how much time I give to others. Amen. Now, next lie. You ready for the next lie? No, y'all not ready for the next lie. I ain't got that much time. So I'm going to have to end. Y'all don't? What did Pastor Jericho say? My spouse is good. He just wants some. <laughs> she said, Pastor Jericho said, my spouse is good. He just wants some popcorn and he'll be fine. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I, I, Pastor Jerick, I'm trying to be. <laughs> Yo, she said. Uh, okay, I got to stay focused. Okay, second lie. You ready for this one? <laughs> you ready for this? You ready for the second lie? <laughs> Come on now, I'm trying to be serious. Everybody has to like me. How many of us have lived that lie? Everybody got to like me. Uh-huh. Raise that hand, Trinity. Everybody got to like me. Everybody. Now, you can sit there and say no, but it is a, it is a fact that every one of us or everyone wants to be liked. We want to be liked, almost to the point where we need to be liked. And if we're not liked, it's a problem. It's a problem. And it's not a problem as, boo-boo, y'all want to be negative, let's go. No, it's a problem like, why don't you like me? 
what did I do? What, how many of us have been into a position to where we're not liked by something we know we didn't do or cause, but we go and we apologize for it just so that you can like me? Yeah, I'm, yeah, 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 come on. Y'all better tell the truth, same devil up in this place. How many of us, how many of us were not liked by somebody and we know we didn't do nothing? We were not liked by somebody that we know we didn't do nothing wrong, but just to be liked and okay, we go to that person, apologize. Go to that person, apologize, so that way we can be liked. The problem occurs when we start believing that the lie that everyone has to like me. When you believe this lie, you start living to please people instead of pleasing who? You start living the life of wanting to please people instead of pleasing God. And if you don't believe me, we're going to go to another scripture. We're going to Matthew chapter 22. I'm going to read verses 36 through 38. I'm in the new, I'm in the new international version. And it says, my mother says so many times, my mother, mm, now I know who I get it from. Now I know who I get it from. Because I used to be the same way. I know I didn't do nothing wrong, but you don't like me. But I'm going to apologize because I want you to like me. So it says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. 38 says, this is the first and greatest commandment. Now, we jump to John chapter 14, verses 15, verse 15 in the New International Version. It says, if you love me, keep my commands. See, when we love God, we obey God because we want to please God. The key to a successful life is to find out what Jesus wants you to do, then do it. But... You can't do what Jesus wants you to do and believe the lie that everybody is going to like you when you do it. Right. Hear me when I tell you. You can't do what Jesus wants you to do and believe the lie that everybody has to like you. That, that's why you're going to get... She, she, she <laughs> and just because you keep saying that, you're going to stay there. You're going to stay there. You're going to stay there. And I'm gonna tell and, and, and you ready for this? They don't have to like you. And this is the biggest thing, this is the biggest misconception about being a man or woman of God. That because I'm walking and doing the things of Christ, that it should be liked because I'm not lying, I'm not sinning. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm walking in love, I'm speaking in love, so why don't you like me? Why am I not liked? What's the problem, right? That's the misconception, but it's actually the opposite. Hmm, because you are saved, you're not going to be liked. You're not going to be liked. You're not going to be liked. I can't, I cannot take a possible night, I can't. But you're not gonna be like, now, because the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So guess what, as you transform, and as your mind renews, it's not gonna be liked by those whose mind are not transformed. Because they're not going to understand why your mind is transformed. It's not gonna, they're not going to understand why all of a sudden now you're this new person. It's not going to happen. So we have to come to grips that it's okay that we're not going to be liked. Now, some of us, we're not liked by a few. Some of us, we're not liked by a couple. Some of us, we're not liked by a group. <laughs> some of us, we're not liked by groups. Plural. <laughs> that's just what it is. I, that's just what I can't even, I'm sorry, I can't sit there and tell you why in this season you're not liked by so many or so few people. But all I can say is the reasons why you're not liked. Now, I will say this. 
When you try to operate with the everybody has to like me mentality, you know what ends up happening? You start disobeying Jesus so people will like you. Hear me. What do you mean by that, Pastor Des? Well, I, I'm a, I'm a, I know I'm not supposed to be drinking, but everybody looks at me as corny because I don't go drink and get drunk. So I'm going to just do it today. I'm going to do it tonight so that way I'm okay with everybody. Or I, I ain't supposed to be giving my body up. But in order to keep this relationship and to keep him liking me and to keep her liking me, I'm going to do it tonight. Y'all think I'm lying. Y'all think I'm lying. I, 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 this ain't my first time around the rodeo. I done been around. I done, I done heard. I done heard. I done, I done done it. I done done it. In order for them to like me, I know I'm a Christian, right? But in order for them, in order for them, for me to be cool, in order for me to be back then we used to call it down. I don't know what they call it now. But back then we call it down. In order for me to be 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 I do y'all call it locked in now? I don't know. See, see, she's trying to mess with me. But in order for me to be accepted by this group of people, right? They all smoke. They all smoke. I know I'm not supposed to, but hey, one night won't hurt. So at least I'm good with them people. So what ends up happening? We disobey Jesus trying to like people, trying to get people to like us. And they still not going to like you after you do it. After you do it, this was going to happen. They see you the next day, yo, church boy was smoking weed with us, yo. <laughs> Yo, church boy was in the club with us throwing it up. Yo, you going to church on Sunday, fam? Yo. Now you look crazy. Now you look crazy. Or you gave your body up to that man and guess what he's doing? Yo, son. Shorty, fam. You thought she was a church girl, fam. Yo, she give it up. Now you looking crazy. And now they telling their friends, oh, you want to get some, go to the church girls, fam. They crazy. Because, I'm trying to be serious. But that's what they say. You want a church girl to give it up? You want a girl, you want a girl that's going to give it up? Go to the church. You want a girl that's going to be secretive about what she does, but, be do, but do what she do? Go to the church. But see, the problem is that happens, and some of people are not going to like me for this comment, and I understand, but I'm, I'm talking about it from my experience. That happens because we want to feel accepted. I do that because I want to feel accepted because everybody else around me is talking about what they've done. And I don't have experience in it. So in order for me to get experience in it, I have to do it. So that way I have experience because they know a liar. But they're going to know somebody who's had experience. So I do it to get experience. But what I end up doing is I end up disobeying God. And I end up putting myself in a position to where I really don't want to be. Because now I've allowed things to interact. We're going to go. That's a whole nother topic. That's a whole nother topic. So. You start spending money on expensive clothes and cars to look good, but you don't tithe. I'm going to leave that one alone, too. <laughs> pew, pew. Shots fired. Pow, pow. Pew, pew. Or. You're talking bad about somebody to make somebody else like you. How many of us have been there? Yeah, put, you mean put that pinky up. Put them hands up. Yeah, yeah, put them up. Put them up. We've all been there. We've all been there. Yes, we've all been there. Somebody's talking bad about somebody, right? And you in the crowd. How many of us, okay, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to bring up three people that I think we've all, we've all been in one time in our life and I walk with God, right? Y'all in the huddle, somebody walk past that somebody don't like, I can't stand her, yada, 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 yada. Girl, I can't even. They look at you and you be like, mm. You ain't got nothing to say, but you say, mm. That's one kind. That, that, that's one kind. You ready for the second kind? You ready for the second kind? That person walked past. Girl, I don't like her. Man, I don't like her either. She stank, yada, yada, yada. And you be like, really? She stank? 
I didn't know that. That's the second person. Ready for the third one? Ready for the third one? Girl walk past. Girl, I don't like that girl. I don't like her. She stink, yada, yada, yada. Girl, shoot. Yeah, she do? Man, I, th I thought that was what I smelled the other day. <laughs> How many of us have experienced either one of those three? One and two. One and two. Two and three. So we've been one, two, and three. Some of us uno, dos, tres. <laughs> we've been all three. Thank y'all. We've been all three. But guess what? We're doing that because we want to feel liked. We're doing that because we want to be a part of what's going on. But it's okay to be not a part. It's okay to not be those individuals. It's okay to be set aside because we ought to be set apart. But the problem is we don't want to be set apart because once we become set apart, then we become the object of torment, teasing. We become the object of uh, what you call I would guess shots being fired for no reason because I go to church. I can't tell you how many times when I, when I grew up in the church I grew up in, I was called a church boy. And the crazy thing about it, Trinity, I was called a church boy by the same people who was going to the church with me. You call me a church boy, but you go to the same church. We sing on the same choir, but you calling me a church boy. But then what I ended up having to do, Apostle, I ended up trying to be cool. I ended up trying to curse. I ended up trying to dib and dab in certain things because even though I go, I want to be one of those cats that go to church on Sunday, but I'm, I'm, I'm still doing my thing throughout the week. Come on, y'all stupid that look. Like, if they, just think about it. Be, it made sense at the time because that's what everybody else was doing. But it didn't make sense in regards to your spiritual walk with God. Because you were disobeying him to be liked by everybody else. Amen? What people think about us is not as important as what God thinks about us. Pleasing people is not as important as pleasing Jesus. Now, it's 735. Can y'all give me 10 more minutes? 10 more minutes. Oh, wow. So... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring up the fourth one, but I'm gonna bring up the third one. The fourth one we're gonna talk about next week. Because the fourth one is 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 pretty much gonna take up a whole a whole uh segment. All right. The third one is I have to be like everyone else. I have to be like everyone else. Not liked by everyone else, but I have to be like everyone else. So for example. Uh, in my walk with God, not only in my walk with God, but when I accepted the call to become a pastor, what I used to do is I used to look at pastors, look at how they preach, right? And I used to look at how they captivated the crowd when they preached. And I used to, I used to look at what they did. I used to, and sometimes I would study it. Like, okay, wow, how, 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 how did they get from this moment to this moment? And then what I ended up trying to do is I ended up trying to mimic some of these preachers. I ended up trying to mimic some of these preachers. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've not been the one to be hollering. No, I've been hollering, but I haven't been the one to do the, 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 the asthma thing or, or the, I didn't say it. I just repeated what they said, you know, or the, or the singing with the, uh, you know, with, with the, the old Baptist Pentecostal. Now, I tried, and thank God I tried in my home, and I didn't try it out nowhere else because I sounded ridiculous. I really did. I, I sounded simple. I did. But I thought a sample? No, I'm not giving you a sample. You're crazy. But I thought that was the way to preach because that's all that I was used to hearing. That's all that I was used to seeing. And even my leader, if you ever heard him preach, that man can preach the house down. And I'm saying to myself, I got to be that. Or speaking it like I've got to speak in tongues like he's speaking. I've got to do that. I have in order for me to be successful. And it took me not only trying to do it and failing, but it also took me trying to change up the way I would preach on certain Sundays. And God showing me that, son, that's not what I've called you to do. That's not how I've created you to be. That's not what I've created you to do in this season. Right. So I had to come to grips that I was different from those preachers and that that was a good thing. 
that I was different. Because not only was I different, but I was different because God made me different. God created me different. Now, if I get to that point where I'm able to get to that level, then so be it. But as it stands right now, you're not going to get all that from Pastor Des. Now, you you going to get some Holy Ghost anointed teaching and preaching, but I don't think you're going to get the the uh, uh, flexion in voices and the singing with the, the B, the F flat and all that. I can't do that. But a lot of us have grown in realizing that sometimes we feel as though we have to be like certain people in order for certain things to take place. And that's living a lie. That's living a lie. And if you don't believe me, last scripture for the night. You ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 17 through 18. I'm going to read it in the New International Version, and it says, If the whole body were an eye, where where, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. Now I'm going to read it in another, in another version. It says, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wants them to be. God has made us just as he wants us to be. He created us to be that fact. He created us for a specific purpose, which is the reason why he created us. He gave us the gifts and talents that he wanted us to have. So I, I'm not going to have the same gifts and talents that Trinity has. I'm not going to have the same gifts and talents that apostles have. Y'all are not going to have the same gifts and talents that I have. But you're going to have the gifts and talents that God has given you. And it's going to be needed in this season. See, the body of Christ, like we have a body, right? Every single body part has their own specific goal and, and, and operation. You don't want the right hand working like the left hand. Because if you have the right hand working like the left hand, then that means something is out of order. And the problem is, in the body of Christ, we have out of order because everyone is trying to be like everybody else. And nobody is stepping out to be what God has called them to be. We're having that a lot, and that's the problem. A lot of us in the body of Christ are living a lie in ministry. We're not being who God has called us to be. Because God is saying, I have an anointing on your life, but you're, on, you're not going, that anointing is not going to manifest because you're so busy trying to copy somebody else's anointing. And it's not going to manifest. So that means we have to realize that I'm not going to be like this individual, but I'm going to be like who God called me to be. But how many of us have been there before to where we feel as though we needed to be like somebody in order for something to happen? Yes, I, I needed to speak like this. Or how many of us thought I needed to speak like this person is speaking in order for me to get the job? I needed to talk like this person is talking in order to get the position. Or in order to get noticed on the job, I've got to, I've got to be a certain way. I just can't be myself. I've got to be a certain way in order to be noticed. But God created you the way you are. And don't you think if he created you the way you are, he created you to be noticed in your season? He created you to be noticed in your time. He created you to be not only noticed where you are, but he created you to be noticed in tables and places and, and conferences and rooms that you're not even there yet. He created you in that purpose. All you got to do is walk in the anointing that he's given you. Don't try, to, don't try to sound like a Michael Todd. Don't try to sound like a Stephen Frederick. Don't try to sound like a T.D. Jakes. Don't try to sound like a Sarah Jakes. Stowe. Sound like yourself. Be yourself. And God is going to push you in where you need to be pushed. But the lie we have to stop living is that I have to be or sound or look like this in order for this to take place. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we love you. We adore you. We praise you. Lord God, as we close this midweek tonight, Father, I pray that we've been enlightened in more ways than one. Father, I also pray, Lord, that you begin to remind us that we're valuable. 
We're special. We're fearfully and we're wonderfully made. Father, I also pray that you begin to remind us, Lord God, that we don't have to be like others. We don't always have to be liked. And we definitely may not always have to, we may not always have to meet everyone's needs. And it's okay if that doesn't happen. As long as we're being pleasing in your sight, that's what matters. And Father, I pray that if we've been living these lies, Father God, I pray that we all repent in this moment. Because we don't want to live a lie. We want to live in truth and in righteousness. And Father, we also pray, Lord, that you that you continue to use the Holy Ghost to, to remind us, to put the mirror up, to, to keep us humble, Father God, as we continue to grow in you. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We praise you for what you've done. And Father, we're excited about what you're going to do in this season, in this midweek series, Father God. Because tonight, we quit living the lie. Tonight, we quit living the lie. Tonight, we quit living the lie. And we thank you, Father God, for the revelation. And we praise you for it even now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And God's people say, amen. Amen, amen. We blessed tonight, y'all. We blessed tonight. Listen, we will continue this next Thursday on this series, I Quit. I Quit. That's our midweek series. And you don't want to miss our sunday reboot series y'all we are having we are opening up a series that we are teaching that we're going to be preaching on sundays and well, this sunday the sunday in the month of june and that title is now what now what so trust and believe pentecost has come and gone now what now what so you don't want to miss it this Sunday. Please meet me here in the building Sunday for our reboot service as we start our Sunday service series of Now What? Thank y'all so much. This is the Excelling Church, Georgia campus, where your life gets better from here. This is our midweek check-in. Thank y'all for checking in this evening, y'all. Listen, invite, invite, invite people to come because I'm pretty sure that they will be blessed just as much as you was blessed tonight and invite them to come to Sunday on our reboot service. I love y'all so much. You are officially dismissed. Be safe, y'all. Love y'all.